Hi, my name is Yogesh Prabhu and uh, this is a video series on applied mathematics and uh, the topic today is going to be beta gamma function. So in this video, I will be explaining to you what are beta gamma functions. I will give you essential formulae and this is a quick intro. So I will quickly explain to you what they're all about and how do you solve a particular problem. So let's get started. The first, uh, what are beta gamma function? Beta gamma functions are standard integrals. So let me give you the first integral here. It's an integration function going from zero to infinity, e raised to minus x, x raised to n minus one dx. Now this integral is called as gamma function. Now when you have this integral, the good news is you don't have to solve it because the answer of this integration is ready and that is written as gamma n. So you will read this as gamma n. Okay. Now, just to make you understand this better, I'll take one example. Well, the example is like this. Supposing if I have integration zero to infinity, it has to be exact same form. Okay. It has to match. It has to be exact zero to infinity, nothing else. E raised to minus X that's matching. And if you have a say x raised to 5 dx, now for this integration, you can just write down answer directly. You don't have to solve this. And 5 is nothing but 6 minus 1. So just to make it match n minus 1, I'll write 5 as 6 minus 1, which is say gamma 6. Now the technique what you can do here always is you can add 1 and subtract 1. You can always do that. And you see 5 plus 1 is 6. Now gamma 6 is very easy to find. Gamma 6 is just one less factorial. What I mean is you can write down gamma 6 as 5 factorial. 6 minus 1 5 factorial is the way to write gamma. So if you have gamma n you will just write it as n minus 1 factorial. So gamma 6 becomes 5 factorial. Gamma 10 would be 9 factorial and so on and so forth. So this is how we write down the values of gamma function. So you have a standard integral and that's this its value. Okay. And it is called as a gamma function. Now, after the first one is done, now let me give you one more. And supposing if you have integral going from say zero to one, and if you have X raised to M minus one and one minus X raised to N minus one DX. Now this is written as beta M comma N and it is called as beta function. So as you can see, beta and gamma, both are standard integrals whose values are ready. And since the values are ready, you don't have to solve them. Just write down and get the final answer. Let me take one more example for the beta one now. Okay, for example, supposing if I have integral going from zero to one, then say x raised to seven, one minus x raised to say five by two uh, dx. Now I want to find out the answer to this integral. Now, how do we do that? The same procedure, just do add one and subtract one and club these two. Then again, add one and subtract one and club these two. So you're going to get M minus one and N minus one. And this will be the value here is going to be beta eight. And this is seven by two. So now you have value of this integral as beta eight comma seven by two. Well, how do we solve beta? Okay, that's very simple. It's like this. This is beta m n. You can write beta m n as gamma m, gamma n upon gamma m plus n. That's just the relation between beta and gamma. And you can see you can write beta in terms of gamma as well. Okay. Well, let's do that here. Well, I have uh, this as beta 8 comma 7 by 2, which will be gamma 8 gamma 7 by 2 upon gamma 8 plus 7 by 2. Now, as I told you that if you have gamma 8, then I can simply write it as one less factorial. So that will be 7 factorial. Hey, but now the problem is when you have gamma 7 by 2, it's a, if I do one less factorial, you can't write factorial for fraction. That's just invalid. The factorial is applicable only if it is a whole number, right? So now when you have fractions inside gamma, the way of writing this would be, there's a technique to this, that when you have seven by two, just subtract one from seven by two, 
which will become 6 by 2. I'm sorry. 7 by 2 minus 1 will give you 5 by 2, isn't it? 7 by 2 minus 1. Now, write that down, 5 by 2 over here. And subtract 1 from 5 by 2 as well. So, you will get this as 3 by 2. Subtract 1 one more time. So, it becomes half. And you sub keep subtracting 1 till you get the last positive number. See, now, if I subtract 1 from half, it's going to be negative. So, you have to stop at this point. And whatever is your last number, just repeat that and write it as gamma half. That's just the way it works for fraction. I'll explain to you why it is exactly like this in a minute. But this is just like a thumb rule you can imagine. That just keep subtracting 1 and write down and repeat the last value under gamma again. Anyway, so denominator is going to be again a big number. Let's just multiply it to the 16. 16 plus 7. That is 23 by... That's just going to be a lot of solving. Anyways, so that's how we write down beta and gamma function. The main formulae are over here. You're supposed to remember this formula of gamma function. You have to remember this formula that is for beta function. And then the two examples of a beta and gamma. Just, just to know, just so you know how exactly you're supposed to use these formulae. And now apart from that, you can write down some more formulae. I'll write down some more formulae for you all. Uh, the first formula, there's one more formula for beta function, which is if you have integration, say 0 to pi by 2, and if you have sine theta raised to p and cos theta raised to q d theta. Now, this is also a beta function. Now, uh, value of this integral is half beta p plus 1 by 2, comma q plus 1 by 2. Now, this is another formula very important you have to remember this format as well. So, well, three standard integral, just remember the format. And if it exactly matches with the question that is given to you in exam, you can directly write down the answer without solving. That's the whole point here. And uh, well, you can you can actually simplify beta functions in, in many ways, okay? But uh, these three are the more important ones. So you have to remember one and the other one and two, very important. Also, beta can be simplified in some other ways as well. And that is, supposing if you have integration 0 to infinity, the next one is, sorry, 0 to 1, uh, x raised to m minus 1 plus x raised to n minus 1 upon 1 plus x raised to m plus n dx. Even this can be written as beta mn. Less frequently used formula. It's not really... You'll not find this more often, but then this is basically derived from this main formula of beta function anyways. And then there is one more. Uh, when you have, say, integration 0 to infinity and x raised to m minus 1 upon 1 plus x raised to m plus n dx can also be written as beta mn. Not very important, but just at least remember like the three hashtags, the main formulae of beta gamma function. So next time you see any integral which is of the exact form of 1 or 2 or 3 type, you can directly write down their answers without really having to solve the integral. So you can look at beta gamma function is like a shortcut for solving integrals. And that's, that's how it's going to be. Now, in the next video, I will be taking some of the, some of the examples and I will solve them using the standard formula of beta gamma. So that is coming up.